In this video, we're briefly going to discuss vector fields. So a vector field, vector field, over a plane region R, so over a plane region, which we'll call capital R, is just a function, so is a function. And we tend to use uh, capital letters, so I'll use big F. Sometimes people put the little arrow above the big F. I'll, I'll go ahead and do that, just to denote that it is a vector. So it's a function that assigns a vector. So a vector, which we can call F of x, y. Uh, to each point x, y, and r. So to each to each point x, y, and r in our plane region r. In our plane region r. Likewise, you can define a vector field over a solid region q uh, in space. And it's the same thing, except it, it assigns uh, a vector in space to an ordered triple. So you can add another dimension and nothing uh, changes. One of the most prominent and important examples of a vector field is the following. So I'm sure you've seen this before. So let's say we have, say we have f of xy. This is simply a function of two variables, right? So this is a function of two variables, just a regular func of xy. And what we can do is, assuming this function is differentiable, we can create a new function, which I'll call big F of x, y. So we're going to define a vector field. And we're going to define it to be the gradient of this function, right? the gradient. And so recall the gradient takes a, a, a point x, y in the x, y plane and turns it into a vector. So the first component of the vector is the partial derivative of f with respect to x. And the second component is the partial derivative of f with respect to y. So that is the uh, gradient. So this is called the gradient, gradient of f, of f. And each vector points in the direction of maximum increase. So let me write that down. So each of these, so each vector, point, I'll explain this, points, it's really interesting, points in the direction, in the direction of maximum increase. So this is a vector field, right? This is a vector field that takes an xy and assigns it to a vector, an important vector, a very, very important vector. Um, so one way to think about the gradient, the way I like to think about it, is like pretend you're standing uh, on a hill, and then this is the base down here. This is your base. But pretend this isn't 3D, right? So there's hills back over here and over here. There's, you know, there's hills everywhere, right? There's, you're somewhere in the middle of this hilly landscape. And below you is this flat plane, which you call the base. So the hills are represented by the graph z equals f of x, y, right? It's a 3D graph, so it can be modeled by this 3D uh, surface. And so the gradient is a vector in the x, y plane. It's a vector down here that tells you which way to go. So uh, it'll tell you which way to go so that uh, you're climbing the hill as fast as possible. So it'll point in the direction of maximum increase. So if you're standing out in a field of hills, uh, the gradient is like a compass. Right? It will tell you which way to go in order to uh, ascend as fast as possible. So kind of a cool thing. There's other types of vector fields. Let's look at different uh, types of uh, vector fields. I just got goosebumps. It's such a cool thing uh, to think about uh, uh, the gradient. Really, really beautiful mathematics. Uh, you can have what's called velocity fields. So velocity fields. Velocity fields. So this is uh, from physics. So here's, here's a, a, a velocity field. I'll draw a picture or attempt to draw a picture of a specific uh, velocity field. So here's, here's the axle. And I'll, I'll draw like a little spinning object here. Okay. And so it takes uh, an x, y and assigns it a vector. So, um, so these vectors here are at the edge. These are velocity vectors. Okay. 
velocity vectors. Right, they're all tangent. I don't know if you remember that from, from Calculus 3, from previous material. And there's also velocity vectors in here, right? There's also little velocity vectors in here. And the cool thing about this picture, the really interesting thing, is that the velocity vectors are bigger uh, the farther away they are from the axle because the velocity is greater so you have longer vectors. Let me write that down. So uh, the farther, the farther, it's kind of a funny word, the farther away from the axle, away from the axle, uh, the greater the velocity. So the greater, the greater the velocity. Okay, so the farther away you are from the axle, the greater the velocity. So you get bigger vectors. So the bigger the vector. Right, so the so so the bigger the vector. So the bigger the vector. Let's look at another uh, cool conceptual example. Uh, just this video, I just want to look at examples and just talk about some definitions. Just look at some intuitive stuff. Um, so let's say we have, uh, let me use a different color. Let's say we have the z-axis here. That's the z-axis. And let's say that this is the uh, x-axis. This is the x-axis. And this over here is the y-axis, right? And so I'm going to draw uh, what appears here to be uh, a pipe, okay? Like a pipe, like uh, the pipes you have uh, where you live. You know, hopefully you have plumbing, but... Um, if you do, um, I'm sure most people do, but if you do, it's good. Um, you know, water flows through pipes. So I'm going to draw this 3D object here. So, and then we have velocity vectors. So I'm going to draw them in, in yellow, maybe. Let's try yellow for the velocity vectors. There's a velocity vector there. And then this, velo this velocity vector is bigger here, and I'll explain why it's really cool. This one is bigger here, and then we have a little velocity vector here, and a little one here, and then a bigger one here, et cetera. It's supposed to be a straight line. So the point is, you can think of this as water moving through a pipe. So water moving through a pipe. Through a pipe. Okay, so it's like water moving through a pipe. And in the middle, in the middle, the water moves faster. So the, in, in the middle, in the middle, the water moves faster. Right, that makes sense, right? Because um, you know, that's how it works in pipes, right? So you have larger vectors. You have larger vectors. So, so as water flows through a pipe, the water in the middle of the pipe flows faster than the water, like you know, hitting the sides of the pipe, hitting the inner, the inner part of, the, hitting the outer part of the pipe. So the velocity vectors uh, are bigger uh, in the in the uh, inner part of the pipe. All right, let's go to a, a very uh, important uh, definition. So we say a vector field, so a vector field, a vector field is conservative, and we'll talk about why it's called conservative as well, is conservative if it is the gradient of some differentiable function. So if it is the gradient of some differentiable function, so of some differentiable differentiable function. So a vector field is conservative if it is the gradient of some differential function. Uh, so so to, re to recap, so this means, so that is, let's formalize it. Big F, this is a vector field, is conservative conservative if, and let's use some fancier notation, let's derail here, there exists. So this backwards E in mathematics means there exists. So there exists a function which we'll call little f, right, that's differentiable. Let's put diff, such that, st means such that, uh, big F is equal to the gradient of little f. So a vector field is conservative if it is the gradient of some differentiable function. Super, super important, right? Little f has a name, okay? Little f is called the potential function. So little f, this is called your potential, 
potential function. And the videos that follow will do plenty of examples of finding potential functions and determining whether a uh, vector field is conservative. So gravitational fields are conservative, electric force fields are conservative. Uh, it has to do with conservation of energy. If you take kinetic energy plus potential energy, it's constant. So the energy is conserved, hence the name conservative. Again, if you take kinetic energy and you add potential energy, you get a constant. So the energy is conserved, hence the name conservative. So. Uh, there is a test that you can do to check if a vector field is conservative. So, um, so test for conservative vector fields in the plane. So in the plane. So this is the test for conservative vector fields uh, in the plane. And the test says the following. So first of all, uh, you have two functions here of two variables, big M and big N. And these functions have continuous uh, partial derivatives, continuous first partial derivatives. So I uh, have continuous first partials. In other words, they're called continuously differentiable. It's another way of saying this. In other words, they're called C1 functions, extra life knowledge. So continuous first partials is the same thing as continuously differentiable. Sorry, I made a sound there. So continuous first partials is the same thing as continuously differentiable, which is the same thing as a C1 function, just extra knowledge. This is usually satisfied. So let's write big F. We're running out of room here. Look at that. My screen is almost done. So I'm glad we're almost done with the video. So if we write big F, as m i hat plus n j hat, you can think of it like this, m n, the test says the following. So it's going to be conservative. So is conservative. So this vector field is conservative if and only if. So here's the trick. The n is over here. It's the second component. So it's the other variable. So del n del x needs to be equal to del m del y. So really easy to memorize. Uh, you, this, this is like the y component, so you put an x here. This is like the x component, so you put a y here. So if this is true, your vector field is conservative. Again, in the videos that follow, we're going to focus on conservative vector fields. I just wanted to make a, a video just going over some of the theory and looking at some of the examples. Uh, if you've made it this far, awesome. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope this video uh, has helped in some way. That's it.